Hey everyone, how's it going? God Gamer here. Today I'm going to be reacting to two different clears of Any Radiance 2.0. This is something I never thought I would see in my career as a Hollow Knight YouTuber. Any Radiance 2.0 is probably the hardest boss ever beaten in a video game by a human player. There was a whole team effort of different players coming together to collaboratively figure out how to beat this boss. Okay, so this is Neo Exilaris' clear of the boss. This is an absolute treat to watch. First thing you'll see is there's spikes covering every single platform. These spikes deal double damage if you touch them, and you cannot use Descending Dark to invincibility frame and get rid of them. So basically, D-Dark is not a consistent option in this fight. The sword burst there, you'll actually see that you can save spot in the center and just use Abyss Shriek to deal damage to the boss. Pretty hard to do, but that's something that players have to do because it's kind of like a DPS race. You get so many undodgeable patterns like this, that you have to kill the boss very quickly before too many of those patterns happen. So they use the spell in order to stall themselves in the perfect position to dodge in between the swords. So this is the only way for them to consistently dodge the attack. The speed that he's doing damage at is also really noteworthy. Like he's doing nail turnaround cancels so quickly against this boss. It really is a DPS race, but at the same time, he's dodging attacks when he can so masterfully. This phase is ridiculous, by the way. Like, you really have to deal damage fast because there's going to be undodgeable patterns of swords. And you, you just have to dodge wherever you can, and when you get hit, you just have to accept, you know, you got hit. There wasn't much you can do about it. So this is the platform phase. This is ridiculous. He's going to use a strat where he stays on the left side and it just it gives him a bit more room to dodge these attacks from range and he uses balder shell here to just invincibility frame and get some damage off real quickly the beam walls here are ridiculous so being on the left side allows you to shade dash through both of them as they come at you but a strat he uses is to actually use the tiniest safe spot so look at where he is the beam wall moves so quickly that its hitboxes are actually kind of separated, which means that if you're positioned perfectly, you can actually squeeze in between the hitboxes. But there's also different patterns to the beam wall, which means that the position that you have to be at is not the same every time. And it's kind of important that he did it because he needs to shade cloak in order to get through this sword wall. So you can see he uses shade cloak there instead. And then he just has a bit of free reign to deal some more damage to the boss. And this is a spot where he uses Crystal Dash stalls. So C Dash stalling is when you spam Crystal Dash on a wall in order to slow your descent down that wall. And the goal is to just stay on this side of the platform to use the other side of the platform as a shield from the orbs. It's just such a cool strategy to see being employed. It's the only platform that they can use because all the other platforms are smaller in size. And this is actually a safe spot. This is the only safe spot in the entire arena. And it's just the tiniest little spot that you can stand on while not taking damage from the spikes. And that allows them to actually get some heals off in the boss fight. And because of the fact that they have Baldur Shell, if they get into a bad spot like that, they do have a bit of leeway to take a hit. But you can see he's just looking for an opportunity to try and go for some more heals because the climb phase is going to be so insanely difficult that you really want as much HP as possible going into it. And this is the beginning of the climb phase. Uh, you can see there's spikes on every platform, which makes it pretty difficult. And they use this super cool strategy where they use a descending dark to go down into the void. And what that does is it respawns them on this platform and the spikes are temporarily despawned. Now respawning actually gives you a ton of invincibility frames, so it lets them get all the way up to here before they're vulnerable again, at which point they take damage and use the invincibility frames to land on the platform, despawn the spikes, and begin using Balder Shell. Now they're gonna get hit pretty much instantly here and Balder Shell is done, but they can wall jump up and use the invincibility frames from Baldur's Shell in order to get all the way up to the boss. 
If you remember any Radiance 1, we used all four charges of Baldershell in order to get through that climb. They have a much harder version of the climb, but they only use one charge of Baldershell in order to get through it, just because their strats are so much more advanced. But anyway, this is the final phase where you just kind of lure the orbs off screen to force them to despawn. And this is so much harder because the orbs spawn so fast. And you have to fall back on the screen in order to deal damage to the boss. So you're vulnerable to getting hit pretty much any time you go for a pogo. And the speed at which the orbs spawn make this insanely difficult. You have to do 41 pogos total in order to finish the boss. And this should be it. Just insane. This is an insane clear of a boss. There's really not that much more for me to add to this. You, you can see there's a lot of strategy and labbing and practice that went into clearing this boss. Neo Exilaris alone has put hundreds of hours into it, but the main charge behind clearing the boss was actually by a player named Guy. Now, just a few days ago, Guy also cleared the boss and was the second person ever to beat it. Now, Guy does use the hideous version of any radiance. Neo thankfully modded out the horrible eyeballs, so I'm, I apologize for what you're about to witness. This is any radiance 2.0's true form. Look at these horrible eyeballs. But you can see making use of Abyss Shriek stalls and using uh, the C dash stall strat to dodge orbs in the first phase as well. That's something that players do. Something I really like here is just look at how early they leave the side of this platform. They only C dash stall for just a short period of time and then they go back up and punish the boss as soon as possible. It's just the level of optimization that's gone into this is really just difficult to believe. But you can see they do get a lot of sword burst attacks. Getting through the first phase is partially reliant on getting that attack because it's just such an easy way to deal damage to the boss. And I say easy, it's not easy, but it does allow you to deal a lot of damage. And taking one damage at the very end of the sword rain, which is unfortunate, but it's just a really hard phase to get through because you have to deal damage to the boss so quickly because of how much HP it has and because of the potential for undodgeable patterns. So once again, we're using the left side strategy for this and we get orbs using Shade Cloak to get through that sword wall to get onto the platform. Really just careful, methodical play. And he's really just waiting for the boss to come to the left side to deal some damage. Luckily, the patterns here aren't too bad. You have to react so quickly, I feel, to the beam wall because you only get an audio cue like the instant it spawns and you have to immediately dash to the left. So once again, using that platform as a shield and just shade cloaks into that last orb to despawn it. You can see he tries to use that safe spot, but just barely misses because it's so precise to get that. And he tries to dodge through the sword wall because he has to dash through it and ends up dashing into the spikes here and takes double damage because of it. Just a really tough position. And the boss doesn't really give him any good time to go for the heal because he's so busy dodging other attacks. He really desperately wants to go for the heal because you need extra health for the climb phase and finally getting an opportunity, finally. And really good RNG on the sword burst there. It just kind of goes past him without him having to move. But the boss moves over and he ends up taking more damage, so he has to do more healing. But it's just so much patience to get through this phase because it's so easy to take damage from any of these attacks. Especially when the boss spawns on you and does a beam burst just like that. He probably wants, he definitely wants to get more heals in, and you can see he walks through to get the right positioning instead of landing. But the sword burst just gets him, and he has 7 out of 9 HP going into the climb, which to my understanding is actually pretty good. You can get through the climb apparently with like 4 HP if you play it perfectly. He tried to do that descending dark strat, but you can see he got hit while he was at the top, just beginning the cast. And you can see he's got 2 HP right now, 
Okay, this guy has put a thousand hours into the boss, and this is potentially his first clear ever. So imagine being in this situation and only being one hit away from death, and you have to hit the boss 41 times, and even there he like almost got hit. It was so close because he had to land on the boss to, in order to get his double jump back. Really close situation right there. But otherwise, it's really controlled, and it's just... This This is a terrifying phase. The orbs spawn so fast. They spawn, like, so much faster than the first fight. Like, I wonder how much practice went into this phase alone. Because this is a phase that you can do consistently, but it's just... It's got to be so difficult. But yeah, that's the second person ever to clear the boss. Huge congrats to Guy and Neo Exilaris for finally pulling this off. Absolutely insane that they managed to do this. And like I said, Guy is going to be making a documentary style video kind of showcasing all of the tech and strats that went into this. So if you eventually want to watch that, make sure to subscribe to his YouTube. There was actually talk about doing this on Ascended difficulty, which means double damage. So four damage instead of two. I would be pretty surprised if they managed to pull that off, but I also never thought this would happen in the first place. So yeah, we'll see. Definitely go give those players a subscribe and have yourselves a wonderful day.